Modern battleships are a sight to behold. They are as beautiful as they are graceful, gliding across the ocean with an almost serene presence. Yet beneath that sleek exterior lies an arsenal capable of unleashing unparalleled destruction. These vessels are not just technological marvels, they are floating fortresses, bristling with an array of sophisticated weaponry. Designed to dominate any threat, they are equipped to engage in air, surface and underwater combat with deadly precision. In the following sections, we'll delve into the formidable weapon systems that make these modern warships not only majestic to look at, but also terrifying adversaries on the battlefield. The Phalanx SeaWiz, a cutting-edge defense system utilized by the US Navy, has earned the nickname the Angry R2-D2 due to its resemblance to the iconic Star Wars character. This formidable system is known for its ability to greet incoming threats at a staggering rate of 75 bullets per second, providing an unparalleled layer of protection for naval vessels. This is what we can call a good defense, a furious offense. The development of the Phalanx SeaWiz began in the early 1970s with General Dynamics being awarded the contract for its production. The first prototype system was offered to the US Navy for evaluation on the destroyer leader USS King in 1973, and it was determined that further work was required to improve performance and reliability. The first ship fully fitted out was the aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea in 1980. Since its introduction, the Phalanx series has been continually updated and refined to address evolving threats and incorporate new technologies. The last upgrade Block 1B guns employ an electro-optical sighting system and offer anti-air and anti-surface capabilities not present in Blocks O through 1A. Block 1B systems can be linked with the RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile or RAM or C-RAM systems. The SeaWiz is engineered as a versatile bolt-on system, with a modest working circle of 18 feet of unobstructed deck space. It requires 440 VAC, 3 phase, 60 hertz, and 115 VAC, 60 hertz electrical power, a ship's heading input, and a saltwater coolant line providing 20 gallons per minute at 30 psig, or 30 liters per minute at 2 kilograms per square centimeter. Although the Phalanx system is designed for independent operation, it can also integrate with the Aegis combat system on major warships. The Phalanx SeaWiz stands at a height of 15.4 feet and weighs approximately 13,699 pounds. Its range of motion includes an elevation capacity of plus 85 to minus 25 degrees, moving at a rate of 115 degrees per second. Additionally, the system can train from 150 to plus 150 degrees, also at a speed of 115 degrees per second. 
At the core of the Phalanx Seawiz lies the M61 Vulcan, a six-barreled 20mm rotary cannon capable of firing at a rate of 3,000 to 4,500 rounds per minute. The 20 by 102 mm ammunition for the Phalanx Mark 15 Mod O is designed to effectively bring down aerial targets, utilizing a heavy metal penetrator without an explosive filler. The Mark 149 Mod O and Mod 2 projectiles employ a depleted uranium subcaliber penetrator, while the Mark 149 Mod 4 and Mark 244 Mod O rounds feature a tungsten or tungsten alloy steel penetrator. The Mark 244 Mod O cartridge, also known as the Enhanced Lethality Cartridge, or ELC, boasts a more aerodynamic tungsten alloy penetrator, which results in an extended effective range. The velocity of the Mark 149 cartridge is about 3,600 feet per second. The ammunition handling system has two conveyor belt systems. The first takes the rounds out of the magazine drum to the gun. The second takes empty shells or unfired rounds to the opposite end of the drum. The SeaWiz employs a duo of radar antennas that collaborate to target potential threats. The search antenna housed within the randome atop the weapon control group's white painted section supplies the SeaWiz computer with data on the bearing, range, velocity, heading and altitude of detected objects. The data is then analyzed to establish whether the object warrants engagement by the SeaWiz. Upon recognizing a valid target, the mount swivels to face the object before handing it off to the tracking antenna when it is around five miles away. The tracking antenna is highly accurate, although it covers a significantly smaller area. The tracking subsystem monitors the target. The computer waits for the optimal moment to strike, maximizing the likelihood of a successful hit. Depending on the operator's settings, the system will either fire automatically or at approximately 1.2 miles or recommended firing to the operator. Usually, the third projectile out of the barrel is on target. Phalanx determines a target as neutralized when it either vanishes from the radar due to an explosion or crashing into the sea, referred to as a hard kill, or when the target experiences a sudden change in speed and direction, indicating a disruption in the airframe known as a soft kill. Upon achieving a hard or soft kill, the phalanx system proceeds to engage the next incoming threat. It can concurrently process up to six threats, ensuring effective defense against multiple threats. The Sparrow missile was developed in the early 1950s as a semi-active radar homing missile system at a time when fighter aircraft were just getting nose-mounted radars to detect enemy plane formations. The Sparrow used this technological advancement to zero in on enemy planes illuminated by radar. A fighter jet with nose-mounted radar could track an enemy fighter, launch a Sparrow missile, and steer the missile by keeping the nose of the jet pointed at the target. Raytheon's RIM-7 Sea Sparrow is a direct development of the AIM-7E Sparrow air-to-air -air missile. The Sea Sparrow missile system is a highly effective surface-to-air missile that is primarily used by naval forces for defense against hostile aircraft and missiles. The missile features a cylindrical body with four mid-body wings and four tail fins, measuring 12 feet in length and 8 inches in diameter. The missile weighs 510 pounds. 
It is powered by a Hercules Mark 58 solid propellant rocket motor that enables it to reach an impressive maximum speed of 2,645 miles per hour. The missile is equipped with a semi-active radar homing guidance system which allows it to track and engage targets accurately. Its warhead is an annular blast fragmentation type, weighing 90 pounds, and it employs a proximity fuse and an expanding rod detonation mechanism with a kill radius of 27 feet. The Sea Sparrow missile has an operational range of 10 nautical miles, making it an essential component of naval defense systems worldwide. With its first combat deployment in the Iran-Iraq war, the Harpoon missile has seen extensive operational use over its nearly five-decade tenure, earning a formidable reputation in the realm of anti-ship weaponry. In a strategic move to strengthen its defenses against potential Chinese aggression, Taiwan is reportedly procuring 400 land-launched Harpoon anti-ship missiles from the US. Unsurprisingly, this development has not been well received by China, given the considerable threat Harpoon missiles pose to any naval force. First developed by the McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing, corporation in the late 1960s and early 1970s, it was initially deployed in 1977. The original purpose of the Harpoon was to provide a high subsonic, long-range, sea-skimming, over-the-horizon missile capable of striking enemy warships with lethal accuracy. The evolution of the Harpoon missile system has been marked by strategic advancements, each serving to enhance its combat capabilities. Harpoon Block 1C exhibited an innovative terminal attack mode that involved a pop-up to around 5,900 feet before diving onto the target. Progression to the Block 1D represented a substantial milestone, with the inclusion of a larger fuel tank and the capability for re-engagement. The range of this missile was extended to about 173 miles, and these variants were designated ARGM-84F. The transition to Harpoon Block 2 marked a significant shift in the missile's operational capabilities. While initially designed for open ocean warfare, the Block 2 variant was adapted to confer upon the Harpoon an anti-ship capability in littoral or coastal waters. This was achieved by integrating the inertial measurements unit from the Joint Direct Attack Munition Program and the software, computer, GPS internal navigation system and GPS antenna receiver from the SLAM Expanded Response, or SLAM-ER. The Harpoon Block 2 Plus saw the introduction of an improved GPS guidance kit and a net-enabled data link for real-time targeting updates. This technology facilitated over-the-horizon targeting, making it possible to engage concealed or cluttered targets beyond the radar's line of sight. In 2015, Boeing introduced the Harpoon Next Generation, also known as Harpoon Block 2 Plus ER. This model extended the missile's range from about 81 miles to roughly 193 miles, incorporated a lighter 300-pound warhead and a more fuel-efficient engine. The Harpoon missile, inclusive of its booster, weighs approximately 1,523 pounds, highlighting its substantial size and heft. In terms of length, there is distinction between the air-launched version and those launched from the surface or submarines. Specifically, the air-launched variant measures about 12.6 feet, while the surface and submarine-launched versions are slightly longer at 15 feet. Regardless of the launch platform, the diameter of the Harpoon missile remains consistent at 13.5 inches. 
The warhead of the missile is substantial, weighing in at 488 pounds, contributing to the harpoon's potent destructive potential. The harpoon is designed for over-the-horizon engagements, which means the target is typically beyond the direct line of sight of the launch platform. As such, it relies on an onboard guidance system to navigate to the target. The original Block 1 harpoons used an active radar homing guidance system. The missile would fly towards the target area using an inertial navigation system, or INS. And then its active radar seeker would activate in the terminal phase of the flight to locate and home in on the target. More recent versions of the Harpoon, such as the Block 2 Plus, have incorporated GPS into their guidance systems. The GPS INS system allows the missile to navigate more accurately to the target area, particularly in littoral environments with islands and other land features that can disrupt the missile's flight path. One of the defining features of the Harpoon missile is its sea-skimming flight trajectory. After launch, the missile descends to a very low altitude above the surface of the sea, making it difficult for enemy radar systems to detect and track. This low-level flight is controlled by a radar altimeter that constantly measures the altitude above the sea surface and adjusts the flight path accordingly. Upon reaching the target, the missile's warhead detonates. The harpoon carries a blast fragmentation warhead, which is designed to explode on impact and create a large amount of shrapnel to cause extensive damage to the target. The Harpoon missile boasts remarkable adaptability, capable of being launched from various platforms. Fixed-wing aircraft can deploy the AGM-84 variant, which operates without the solid fuel rocket booster, allowing the missile's main turbojet to propel the weapon after an airborne release. For stealthier operations, submarines can launch an encapsulated UGM-84 variant. This version is also fitted with a solid-fuel rocket booster, enabling it to be launched from a submerged submarine's torpedo tube. Coastal defense batteries can also deploy the Harpoon missile in the RGM-84 variant, fired with a solid-fuel rocket booster for initial propulsion. This concludes our episode that provides a glimpse into the fearsome arsenal of modern warships. So, what do you think about these formidable weapon systems? How effective are they? What other pieces of military hardware would you like us to cover in our future episodes? Also, if you were lucky enough to operate one of the weapons mentioned in this video, please comment. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.